morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio, so today we are dropping any pretext of positivity, and we are looking at the pointless cards from the upcoming Ultra Prism expansion. You know by now, hopefully, that I am a positive guy, that I like to bring videos about cards that could be good in specific circumstances, really looking at the positivity, really looking at the ways in which particular cards could be used and could be good and could be useful. But once a set, I like to sit down and look at cards and go, no, this is not a good card. It should not see any play. Today, ladies and gentlemen, is that time. It's time to look at pointless cards from Ultra Prism. And we're going to start with Manaphy, a basic water Pokemon that, to be honest, could be donked on turn one by a Feromosa if they're willing to play a bit of the old Professor Kukui. But the reason I'm pointing out Manaphy as a pointless card, neither of these attacks are any good. Now they're both for a single energy, so Manaphy gets a little bit of credit for that. But one water energy, search your discard pile for five basic water, show them to your opponent and shuffle them into your deck. It's energy recycler, but as an attack. But we've got energy recycler as a card. And if you've got five energy in your discard, that means that you really... You're probably kind of mid to late game here. You've had a few turns. You've done a few things. This is a reset up attack in the middle of the game. That's not great. How about using Aqua Patch to just attach them to your Pokemon? How about using Puzzle of Time to reuse Aqua Patch to attach them to your Pokemon? It's just a bit... Why am I using this in the mid to late game? Now, something like a Gardevoir recovering any 10 cards with 230 HP and going to be able to take a hit. Yes, 70 HP, you're going to get KO'd just so you can recover some energy, which in water decks, you'd probably rather use Aqua Patch anyway. Yay, if you don't like that, how about 20 damage plus sleep for a water energy? That's right, for just one energy... 20 damage, and you put them to sleep. And there's a 50% chance they're actually still going to be asleep at the beginning of their next turn. And then maybe they don't have a Guzma, and maybe they don't have an Ace Roller, and maybe they buy themselves a turn. But we got so many Pokemon that inflict sleep at the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we can do an awful lot better than Manaphy. It's not necessarily an embarrassing, offensive card, just when am I ever going to put this into a deck? Speaking of cards I never want to put into a deck, Hippowden, which is essentially guilty of just being incredibly expensive. It's a fighting Pokemon, which means you could use really efficient attackers like Buzzwall, or maybe Lycanroc, or you can use this if you really want to be that guy, which personally, I don't. For a fighting and a double colorless energy, bonus points, you can use double colorless energy. Negative bonus points, it's for free energy, which makes it very expensive. 50 damage and the defending Pokemon cannot retreat. Now, I've spoken highly about stopping Pokemon retreating in the past. I have on more than one occasion used Gabite to win a game. But that's 20 damage and they can't retreat for a single energy, not for free energy, doing a whopping 50 damage. The energy to damage ratio here is completely out of whack, and I don't like it. Even worse than that, if you add another fighting energy, so you've now got two fighting and a double colorless, 100 damage plus 10 more for each energy in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. Brilliant. You can do 120 to a Gardevoir and not get a KO. Brilliant. You can do 120 to a Boswell. 150 with a choice ban. 170 with a Professor Kukui, and you're still not getting a KO. You're just not ever doing enough damage. And if I'm investing four energy into a Pokemon that's only got 140 HP and probably won't stay around for very long, I expect to be getting lots of big KOs. Here, okay, if you're against something like a Zoroark where you're hitting for weakness, yes, you will get a one-hit KO. 
on a stage one for four energy. Ladies and gentlemen, if you really want a fighting type Pokemon to take down a Zoroark, we can do much, much better. Much better. Next Pokemon up here to be mocked is Lopunny, which 90 HP on a fighting weak Pokemon means it will last approximately five seconds against a Buzzwall. Buzzwall with a strong energy will get a one hit KO here straight away. Nothing to be proud of there. And then for one colorless energy, flip two coins, 40 damage for each heads. If you flip double heads, you could be KOing something like a Ralts. But if you only flip one head, you're doing 40 damage. I know it's for one colorless energy, but 40 damage won't get you anything above, I don't know, a magic up. Why are we getting excited here about the possibility of KOing a magic up? We shouldn't be, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a good attack. But the thing that really upsets me about Lopunny here. For a double colorless energy, which is a special energy and you can only play four of in your deck, so you need to use them wisely, 60 damage, and you can shuffle Lopunny and all cards attached to it back into your deck. Now you might be thinking, hang on a second, Ross. Mineshow did a similar thing. Mineshow was pretty good, yes. Yes, it was. Here's the thing which made Mineshow good, amongst other things. You could use strong energy. You were hitting stuff for weakness. You had Focus Sash, which meant that when you weren't going back into the deck or into your hand with Mind Chow, you had a bit of protection. What you've got here is an incredibly fragile Pokemon with a very bad weakness that relies on double colorless energy, so if you don't draw into one, you can't use it. Mind Chow loves strong, but you could use a basic fighting as well. And never hits for weakness. It's not the new Mind Chow. It's terrible, because you're not hitting enough damage, you're never hitting for weakness, it needs a double colorless energy, and the second you leave it on the field, it is going to get wrecked by a buzzwall. Sorry ladies and gentlemen, when I first saw this card, I had little memories of Mind Show. I thought maybe, maybe it's coming back, maybe it might be good, but no, I thought about this for a while, it's not coming back. It's not good. And the final one makes me a little bit sad. It's Drampa. Drampa GX is really good. Drampa in the video games is a decent Pokemon that's got some utility. It's won regionals. But you know what? This particular Drampa... I mean, first of all, it's weak to fighting, so we got the whole Buzzwall thing going on there. But the thing that really upsets me here, for a double colorless energy, it's got Outrage. Now, so does Reshiram, and that's not a terrible Pokemon. And so does Zekrom, and that's not a terrible Pokemon. But the thing is, they're hitting for weakness, and these Outrage attacks are really good when you're hitting for weakness. But like we just said with Lopunny, you're never hitting for weakness. You've got a colorless Pokemon. What is the point? No one's going to use this as a blocker. First of all, it will get destroyed by stuff like Gallade and Silvalli. Now, I will give it a little bit of credit because you know what? It can actually take a hit from a Buzzwall with a strong energy and a Fighting Fury Belt, which will do exactly 120, then you get to hit for 140. But no one's ever going to be silly enough to do that. I just don't buy it for a second. We've got Outragers. If you want to use Outragers, we got Reshiram and Zoroark, and they're pretty good. Bad Weakness not hitting for weakness, not a good outrager. And as if this wasn't annoying enough, if you add a third colorless energy, you can do 100 damage. Now, 100 damage for free energy is fine. It's all right. It's not great, but it's not terrible. But then you've got to discard the top two cards of your deck. You can't even just have 100 for free energy. You've then got to also discard the top two cards of your deck. Not buying it, ladies and gentlemen. I think these are four cards that deserve to see no play whatsoever because they've all got huge glaring problems and they just don't do enough. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not buying them. But as always, whenever I do these pointless cards, people like popping in the comment section why they in fact might be good and why I in fact 
might have been too harsh. And I look forward to hearing them. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and so on, you can do so by going at patreon.com slash PTCG Radio. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.